All right, so these are the answers for the guided worksheets for the introduction section. I just wanted to go through that information with you. So some of the information like the purpose of your college education, I hope you have an idea you can go through and think of some of the things too. Um, critical thinking. This whole course is designed around critical thinking and quantitative reasoning. So what we're asking you is to make uh, ask informed questions and make informed decisions. Um, consider both sides of an argument. Don't just accept one answer as being correct and recognize and define problems. Um, so one of the things that you did in the introduction section was you created a spreadsheet on the sales order form and you had to follow along with the videos on this to create this. Um, and so some of the things that you need to make sure you know how to do are things like how to enter a formula. So cell E3 is where the $3 is. And E3 is obtained by multiplying the quantity times the cost. So the quantity is in cell C3 and the cost is in cell D3. So the formula for E3 is the equal sign C3 times D3. And that will take whatever quantity you put in cell C3 and multiply it by D3. So if you change these values, then your cost will automatically be changed. How do I fill this formula down? I could go through and type this formula, which would be C4 times D4 and C5 times D5, but that can get a little tedious if you have a very long problem. So you'll notice on your formulas, on these values, there's a little tag that appears. It's called a handle. And if I wanted to take this formula and fill it to all of these, I can click on the little tag that appears and I can drag it down as far as I want and it will fill it in. So for example, I have my spreadsheet open here in the background. If I go to the spreadsheet and I click on that cell, notice that the handle appears and I can click on that handle and I can drag it down and the formula will fill down. So now this one says C3 times D3, this one says C4 times D4. So you want to make sure that you fill your formulas down as you go through the information. Okay. The next thing that they ask you in the book is what happens to the cell references when you fill the numbers down? So what happens when I do fill them down? And the same thing you can ask about filling them across. So if we go back to our spreadsheet again. So when I filled this formula down, the values of the numbers changed. These were 3 and 3. These were 4 and 4. So if you think about what row you're on, that's what's changing. So this is going to come down. So this is going to go to 3 to 4. And then from here, it's going to go from 4 to 5. If I were to take that and fill it to the right, then what would change are the letters. So instead of being C and D, it would be D and E. So it increased the C by one cell, and it increased the F, uh, sorry, the E by one cell. Um, and then again, if I filled that down, it would still work. Um, so filling across changes the letters, filling down changes the numbers. Okay, so what built-in function can we use in cell E9? So cell E9 is the cell where we had the sum of all the, the, the values. So if we go back to our spreadsheet that we had here, cell E9 is this value right here. We want to find the sum of all these values. So instead of typing E3 plus E4 plus E5 plus E6, because that can get tedious again, we're going to type in a sum function. So if I type in equals and then sum 
E3 colon E7, it'll take all the values from E3 to E7 and add them up. So this is like saying E3 plus E4 plus E5 plus E6 plus E7. But it's a much simpler way of typing it and less mistakes can be made. All right, so the next question is, if you format the tax in cell E10 to show zero decimal places, what happens to the output in cell E11? So the tax is right here in cell E10. They're saying, what if I format that to show zero decimal places, what happens to this? And what's going to end up happening is there's not going to be any change because Although you're not showing the cells, you're not showing the decimal places when you tell it to show to hide it, it's actually um, hiding them in the background. Um, so again, what that means is um, if I go back to this cell and I change my formatting so that it shows no decimal places, so now it's just saying 2, but you'll notice that this is still 21.6. So if I go out more decimal places, it doesn't make any difference. It's still going to show because what's happening is in the background, Excel is still thinking of that as 1.6, even though it's not showing all those decimal places. Okay. So now we're looking at the next spreadsheet, and you created this on sheet two of your spreadsheet. Um, and what they said is, how do you change the name of the tabs? So if I click right here on sheet two, and I want to change that to say concert revenue, um, you can double click on the sheet tab. Um, and it'll be highlighted and it'll let you change it. You can also right click on the tab and it'll give you the option to rename it. So either way, and what will happen is it will highlight the value, uh, the name, and then you just type in the name that you wish to add it in there for it. So if I go back again to my spreadsheet and I decide I want to rename this sheet two to concert revenue. Uh, if you click on sheet two, this is my concert revenue. Sorry, I didn't mean to blow it up so much. Uh, there's my concert revenue. If I want to change the name of the sheet, I can double click and see how it's highlighted. And then I can just type in the name of the value that I want. And uh, I've now changed the name of my, my sheet. Okay, so we can do that if you want to. All right. The next thing that they ask you in the, in the guided notebook is what button do you hit in the menu to format the numbers as currency? And if you notice again in your um, spreadsheet, at the top of the spreadsheet, there's a dollar sign and dollar sign will format it as a currency. So in order to format something as currency, you'll click on the dollar sign. Um, in order to make borders on your um, spreadsheet, you would click on this button right below the bold key. Here's the bold key. There's a button right here that allows you to add borders to something. And if you click on this, you'll notice that there's all borders. Um, which means that basically everything will be outlined. Um, so if I clicked on this system of cells over here and I just highlight it, notice that all the borders disappear. So if I click on this border cell over here and I do all borders, you'll notice that it now has all the borders in there. Um, and you can play around with that if you want different things besides all borders. Um, the next thing, to create a chart, what cell range was highlighted in the worksheet? Okay, so in this, con in this particular case, we wanted to create a chart with the, um, we wanted to create a chart with all of this information in it. We wanted everything from soda all the way over here to our um, concert revenue. So what you'll notice is that you had to highlight from B2 to E7 in the chart. So B2 was the, um, 
revenue per concert and E7 is the $54, I'm sorry, is the uh, 45, 44.50, I think we probably wanted to go all the way to E8 um, instead in order to get the hot dogs in there. So we wanted to hi highlight all of this information in order to get this chart that you see here. If I only highlighted to E7, then that would only get the cookies, the popcorn, the water, and the soda. And you'll notice that my chart does have hot dogs in it. So you have to highlight all of that information. Now notice I did not highlight totals because that would have been a little bit um, confusing. So what, what happened is my chart contained revenue information for um, the sales for the three the three items so all I had in here was concert one concert two and concert three if I had highlighted totals it would have had a fourth column for totals and that would have been a little bit confusing um, so you don't want to do that you have to watch out for what you're highlighting and just remember if you make a mistake you can always undo it and create a new one Okay, so the last thing that you see here is what kind of chart is this table that you see here, this chart that you see here, and this is what we call a stacked bar chart. Um, so if you go back to the example that I did again, you'll notice that I had a couple of different examples here. This is a stacked bar chart. This is a pie chart. Um, pie charts are really nice because they're very clear. They show you what percentage of each item is being used in each um, situation um, and then we have here is just a bar graph so um, now this bar graph only represents soda revenues just so you know I mean you can select other things in order to get other things other information so that's the information that you should have gotten for your guided worksheet for introduction so I hope this was helpful have a great day